What's up, everybody? I'm Sal Kwani. This, this, this is Reggie Steele. And welcome to Spitballing. Spitballing, spitballing. What's up, everybody? I'm Sal Kalani. This is Reggie Steele. And welcome to Spitballing. Let's Boom. get it. Episode Boom. 71. Big, wow. big, big show today. We got a special guest today, Reg. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Reggie Look. came through with a with a big time guest. Come today. on, man. Reggie always comes ah! through. That should be my Reggie, middle name. Reggie, Reggie always was, come through still. He was so excited. He actually was on time today. Like I was just a couple minutes. Like, where you at, dude? He's coming. Where you at? Where you at? <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, you know. I, I was amped. I'm amped. And plus, you gave me 15 more extra minutes today. So that I would have been 15 <laughs> minutes late, but with the 15 minutes, I was on time. So um, how you doing, man? I'm um, good, dude. The Brownies won last night. After it's funny because our pod we usually do right before the football games, but it was a Thursday night game. But last week I totally missed the whole we didn't talk about how they blew it. They blew a game against the Jets. They had a 99.6% chance of winning. Okay. And they blew it. <laughs> and they gave up point six. Yeah, they missed an ec- all. They scored. They're up two touchdowns in a minute and a half left. Okay. They 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 missed the extra point. Oh. They gave up a bomb touchdown. Oh. They gave up an onside kick, and then oh. they gave up another touchdown. All in a minute and a <laughs> half. So wow. I was really pissed, but they came back last night. So so you know what that is? That's um they got complacent. They got comfortable. They thought they had a a significant was, lead. I couldn't believe my eyes. I never saw anything like that. But That's last a total night, collapse. they made up for it, beat the Steelers, who used to always whoop our ass. Right, but the Steelers aren't who they used to be. But, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's true. But, uh, That's true. but uh, yeah, That's man, they got complacent. <laughs> there was a video that I saw on um, on Facebook, which I thought was really funny, because it, it showed all these people. Uh, it was basically titled, Don't Celebrate Too Soon, right? It's like, mm-hmm. you know, you got these people who are racing, and they look behind, and they think they got themselves, they got their opponents by, like, a quarter of a track. So then they start doing this ah, before they cross the finish line. And just that <laughs> oh, one yeah. person in the back was like, <laughs> <laughs> I saw it happen in the Olympics recently. Like they look back and they hold up and boom. Dude, right as the dude is like, yeah, he thinks he's about to cross the finish line in first place. Someone's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, oh, they had like, they literally had like 20 of these. I was, whole, I watched that shit like eight times. It was hilarious. That's on YouTube? Was, it's on YouTube, it was on Facebook, it was on it Instagram. Up. It was everywhere. That joint was hilarious. Like, because I, I've i always, as an athlete, I was always the guy who was like, yo, man, we don't prematurely celebrate. Like, we wait till the final buzzer, and then you can hoop and holler all you want. But right. being up by five with, with you know, 34 yeah, seconds matter. left, it don't matter. So, so watching that joint, that joint had me cracking up, man. All right, man. So our guest is here. He's in the lobby. Let's do it. Okay. All right, cool. Let's do it. All right, man. All right. So uh, our guest today, I'm really, I'm really excited to introduce uh, to you guys. Uh, he's, a, he's a friend of mine. He's a guy I had an opportunity to work with. He's a comedian and an actor. Uh, he's on one of the most popular television shows. Uh, at, at one point, it was like number one in the country. Uh, he's a nationally turned headliner. He's also an awesome guy. Uh, I Welcome to the show, Mr. John Hinton. There he is. There he is. There he is. In the flesh. Hey. Okay. Yes. Welcome to the show, Mr. Hinton. John, how are you? I am good. I'm good. Good to see you, brother. It's been a while. <laughs> oh, man. It's been a long time. It's good to see Rooster, you too, man. Rooster, Rooster Tea Feathers. Yes, sir. Ooh. Yes, sir. Rooster Tea Feathers <laughs> in Sunnyvale, California. Yes. Right? So, man, you look great, man. I see you representing. Got your jersey on. Yeah, man. Well, you know, I got my Buckeyes, man. I went, I went to uh, the Ohio State man. University. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay. So... <laughs> My, uh, I want to introduce you to my co-host. This is uh, my good friend, uh, Sal Kalani. He's also an, uh, an Ohioan, I guess. Is that the right From word? Cleveland, myself. Oh, there you go. Good. Yeah, I yeah. See you got the Browns gear on, man. Oh, I was happy about last night. Did you watch yeah. that? No, I didn't watch it. Because oh. um, I, I said, if I watch it, they'll lose. So uh, I, I took this game <laughs> off, man. So you were watching that Jets game. That's the reason? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I saw that one, man. And that, oh. that was hurt me. So oh. I said, I'm going to take a game off. So I'll come back later on in the year. There All you right. Go. All right. I, I, you know, I have that same, I have that same philosophy. Whenever I watch my team play, they lose. So I just assume it has to be me. Yeah. So I check out, you know how many finals games I've missed? I Unbelievable. Watched, 
Like, ser- I miss whole series. They win. I'm like, yeah. I'll yeah. check it later in the highlights. So, uh, so what's going on, John? Man, it's man. It's been a long time. Like you said, Rooster Teeth Feathers, Sunnyvale. Sunnyvale, wow. man. Uh, it's just just on the road, doing like everybody else, man. Um, after the uh, two year layoff, you know, just getting uh, getting things back up and running again, and uh, just enjoying doing, still enjoying doing comedy, man. Next year. Look here, Red. Next year, uh, January, it'll be my 40th year doing comedy. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yo, that's wow. amazing, man. Congratulations on that. That's yeah, awesome. Man. Yeah. 40 years. All right. 40 so we years. gotta so we gotta go back to the beginning. We gotta go back to the beginning. <laughs> okay. Right. All right. We, got, we got 30, what next year? We got 39 years to cover. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't covering all of that, man. I'm not, <laughs> not, not, <laughs> we want it all. all that, man. <laughs> no, not even. Not even. So uh, we know you from Cleveland, grew up yes, in sir. Cleveland. Um, so I hey, let me know. ask you that. Where okay. in Cleveland? East Cleveland, right? I read that. I went to I went to Shaw, East Cleveland, and uh, my family we moved out to Bedford. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, Bedford, I'm, I'm East Side, man, Bedford. Yeah. Oh, Bedford. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I grew up on Cle- Southeast Side. Okay. 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 So, so Cleveland, side. What side did you grow up on? West yeah. Side. I was West, West Side. side. Of course. Yeah, of very course. segregated. I tell Reggie, it, West was all white and East was all black. And then I worked at the ballpark at Jacobs Field for four years, saw like two World Series. And that's where I really like finally blended with a whole other groups of people. It was crazy. Yeah. Nice. See, I, 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 us together. I grew up in Alabama where all the black people grow up in directions, the East side, the West side, North side, South side, all right. the white people, they live in uh, nature, Brookwood, right? River Chase. Mountain Brook, Shades <laughs> Valley, they live, it ain't fair. So when I heard the West, when I heard the East and the West, I'm thinking it had to be all black people because it's directions, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do have fancy names like the Rocky River and yeah. West Lake, you know. Yeah, we, we got Gates Mills. <laughs> <laughs> See, our Gates, our Gates, uh, Gates City, that's a, that's a project. That's a big time project in, okay. in Birmingham. You can't get in there without invitation. Like <laughs> they literally stop you at the door. Like, yo, you know somebody, bro? Yeah. <laughs> Get on up out of here. So, uh, okay. So grew up in Cleveland. And uh, when did you, when did comedy, like when was comedy first introduced to you? Or when was the, like the, was there anybody in your family that was funny that, uh, that kind of got your attention early? My dad was pretty funny. My dad was real cool. Uh, my dad turned me on to like comedy and uh, music. You know, he, um, uh, that was, that was a big, uh, Big thing that he had over me, man, because it was like comedy. He would bring home, um, he brought home the, this trunk full of uh, albums. He worked at this place called Chase Brass on the east side, uh, Chase Brass and Copper, and somebody sold him some albums. See, my dad came home with a, a trunk load full of albums. Wow. I didn't, wow. Nobody asked where he got them from. <laughs> <laughs> But he brought it home. And I mean, it was all kind of stuff. And, and it was like, it was comedy in there. It was like George Carlin, uh, Richard Pryor, Red Fox, um, uh, Pig Meat, Markham. I'm, I'm talking about like all wow. of uh, Lawanda Pay, um, all of the old school stuff, man. And uh, Cheech and Chong. And um, ah. those uh, those are the people that, that inspired me. Uh, and I always dug um, English humor. So I loved Monty Python. And uh, Benny Hill always had naked women on there, so that was the show. Oh, I love Benny Hill. First time I saw some garden belts, I lost my mind. I said, yeah, this is the show. This is the show right here. I tell you what, we'll be tuning in every week for this. (laughs) Oh, man, that's awesome. I'm glad I was making their ratings, keeping them on the air. Oh, yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. See, we've heard a lot of stories about uh, comedy in the house, but a lot of times the kids were um were told to keep away from it it sounds like you were like introduced to it like they let you they encouraged to they encouraged it it was oh, he i was it. um i was very fortunate because people uh i would be funny you know like uh, people say well, were you a class clown i was like no because class clowns got in trouble right, See, right right i would get my teachers knew i was funny they would give me time at the end of the period it's like five minutes at the end of the period, from like eighth grade, man, I started getting wow. time at the end of the period to just go wow. and just do some stuff. I never wow. wanted to be a comic, but they would let me clown around. So I would always do some jokes, whatever I saw on TV, I would come in and do. So I always wow. had the time. So it was, a, wow. it was nothing that I thought I was gonna get into, yeah. but um, I was always, you know, just kind of funny, man, just uh, cause I didn't like to fight. So I'd be funny. <laughs> <laughs> 
a, a coping mechanism. I love it. I mean, you're um, kind of a bigger guy too. How tall are you? I'm six feet. Okay, were okay. you bigger yeah. in school? Like, would kids pick on you? Uh, no, I, in school, man, I was like about a buck thirty. So that, yeah, I, I, I could. Uh, <laughs> but see, that's that's where the jokes came in and hanging out with the right people, and so I, I got through it pretty much unscathed. Nice. All right, all right. right. Wow, that's pretty awesome. I don't think, I mean, I've known a lot of people who, who clowned in school, but I, I don't think the teachers ever gave them time. I got that's time cool. To, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I, I mean, uh, do, you, do you look at those teachers like, wow, they really helped encourage me at such an early age? Absolutely. Miss Butler, I give them a shout out. Miss Butler, Miss Willis. Uh, you know, I had some teachers, man, and they was like, look, we know you're going to clown anyway, so go ahead and get it out your system. That's I awesome. Just I just go. They say, oh, really? Because I'm in the back <laughs> cracking jokes and stuff and right. messing up the class. And they say, you're going to do it anyway, so go ahead and do it. So I get up there and just clown, man. Wow. wow. That is really, awesome. I had you know a lot, how... lot of encouragement along the way. Oh, my wow. goodness. That's a great approach. You know how great school would be if the teachers actually did that? Yeah. Like, yo, yo, just pay attention for like the first 40 minutes and I'll give you, I'll give you five minutes to just do whatever you want. There right. You wow. That's awesome, man. Okay. So you said you were influenced by Mighty Python like, Mighty or you Python, said you like yeah. any other comics that really stood out to you? Or um, in any, um, I, I loved English humor, um, um, like, uh, Dudley Moore, uh, oh. uh cooking more, man. That, it was like, um, it, I had this fascination with London, man. That was always the place that I, I got a chance to go wow. there. And it was like, it's just this amazing place. It was so much comedy there. And I just, I just like the, uh, the dry English wit, you know, cause right. they, this stuff was on, they didn't have to be over the top, you know, right, I, my stuff right. was always low key. And that's how, that's how um, most of the English uh, stuff was, you know, Monty Python, it was, it was just uh, very uh, subtle. And that's, okay, that's man. how I tried to do my comedy. So that was a big influence. Uh, Richard Pryor, of course, Red Fox, uh, George Carlin, um, that, uh, and Cheech and Chong. I love some Cheech and Chong. Cheech and Chong. And yeah. that's one we don't hear very often. I don't yeah. think I've, we've heard them. You know, I never, see, I never really got into Cheech and Chong. I mean, when I, yeah. when I first got, when I was introduced to them, it was the movies. And it was always yeah. about weed smoke, right? Or right. smoking. And so as a kid, I was like, eh, I never got into them. What, what was their humor like? Was it both of them on stage? Was it a tandem it was, thing? Both of them on stage, a lot of weed humor, just like their movies. The move that's pretty much them. That's what they do. Ah, the material. But it was like movie. um it, it, it was uh, a lot of a lot of thought provoking stuff, but it, it was like uh, you know, a whole bunch of drugs. But it was like when um it was like the late 70s when I was going to college, like when I first oh, went to okay. the Ohio State University. University and their movies were playing and it's like the I got you got to do it the right way man if you gonna do it Reg got the, anyway yes sir I, I understand uh, so I um that's when I really got got into them uh, before that they had a couple comedy albums but it was like it was always comedy and music in my house so I got a chance to listen to it and you know like um the parents you know we we sneaked the Red Fox albums down and you know uh, so. Because we, we weren't supposed to listen to those, but we would always, you know. Okay. <laughs> now, you say we. You have siblings. Yeah. Yeah. I got three sisters. And um, I got three sisters. And uh, I got three brothers. Um, but uh, my brother, the family was divided. It was like my family was, uh, it was uh, mom, dad, my three sisters, and me. Then dad did some stuff before he met mama. And after he divorced from mama. So I got more brothers. So we okay. Got ah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got a big so, family. <laughs> We got a crew. There's it's some, it's some stuff that happened, and uh, we don't we don't talk about it. We just, <laughs> <laughs> ain't none of your business, man. Look, I ain't know it was gonna. We had to answer all these questions, man. Get you some business, Reggie. This is uncalled for. <laughs> I expect a level of professionalism. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, one one hundred percent. That's all. Yo, that should be the highlight. So you got to put that. That's gonna be the clip. <laughs> professionalism Reggie <laughs> at all times and if you're gonna say it say it right you gotta put the v <laughs> that's Ohio right State. that's right so, well like, wow, what'd you major awesome. in at Ohio State like what made you want to go there computer science I was it was uh god damn years. back at that you were ahead yeah. of your time I was, I was, I was man dude I was on it I I we 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 had a computer class and like this was 76 we had this computer class Miss Kane had a computer 76. class uh, she gave me time to do clown clown around too but we um uh, we had this computer and I, this if then statements and it was just all all this stuff just blew my mind and I was like yeah that's where I want to go I was going to be a systems analyst and it's like 
I could still, if I had went on and finished my degree, I'd still be working at that to this day. And I've been way ahead of the game, man. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> wow. This is, so wait, when did the first computer 76? come out? 76, I can't believe that. Yeah, 76. Yeah. Yeah, they, had the, computer computer science. Had, they had the little tape, the if then statements and you feed the tape in and you- Oh, that's it was, right. It was primitive. I mean, it was like, what was it? Fortran's and, oh gosh. Um, it was just like this old computer. Uh, it's, it's just man, like like fifty years ago. But yeah. Okay. Damn. Well, you know when you said four trans, I was about to I was about to make a Dave Chappelle joke. Oh no no, <laughs> it's, there's some different trans altogether. <laughs> <laughs> He's with the original trend. <laughs> Reg trying to get you in trouble. Come on, Reg. You said professionalism. No, you're right. You're right. Let me. I got to reel right, it back. That's, that's all right. See, they can't cancel Dave. They can cancel my black ass. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. No, you're right. You're right about that. I ain't right, getting so canceled on no damn podcast. <laughs> I'll tell you that much right At least now. not this one. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's um, awesome. So can you graduated, science. I assume, from Ohio State. No, he said he didn't. He said, had I finished. Oh, I yeah. no, yeah, I didn't yeah. finish. I started doing this. I, um, what happened? This is uh, this is how everything got started. I was uh, I went to I went to school. I did two years there. Then um, I took a um, I took a summer off. Uh, I took a quarter off because I, I was working. I got me a job because I was going to get an um, apartment on campus. Right. So mm -hmm. I started working at this warehouse in Cleveland at this paint warehouse. And I would always be clowning around there. And um, one day while I was in the warehouse clowning around, it was an article in the um, Cleveland Plain Dealer about stand-up comedy. And at the end of it, this was Friday in the, in the Friday section. So at the end of it, it said uh, amateur night is Sunday night. So all my boys came back with the, uh, with the clipping and said, all right, funny man, let's see what you got. Wow. So ah. I, this was Friday. So I went in the back. And uh, just start writing down some stuff. And I was like, I'm going to do this, man. I, I take the dare. So I went down that Sunday and I didn't win. But in the article, there was a picture of this guy, Jimmy Malone. He was the big, big comic in Cleveland. And it was a picture of him. And when I finished my set, he came up and said, man, that was some good stuff that you did. And I was like, wow, if he thinks I'm funny, I'm going to try this again. And I went back the next week and I won and I, I never went back to Ohio State and I just started doing comedy. Man. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That is, wow. that's amazing. That's amazing. Where was this in Cleveland, the competition? It was, it was the Cleveland Comedy Club. This was, it's pretty much third base of um, Progressive Field now. Oh, uh, right there, okay. Right there on East 4th, you know where, <laughs> yeah. where Nick's place is. It's, it's further down, right where the Central Market used to be back in the day. Yeah, I remember the market it was, there. It was right across the street from the Central Market. It was a okay. Cleveland Comedy Club. Dino Vince. Yeah. Wow. That's funny. Is there, is there a Cleveland Comedy Club today? There's no. The, um, uh, just Hilarities, right? They got, uh, the they got uh, Hilarity. Nick Nick has Hilarities, and uh, Frank has the Improv down uh, downtown. And then... Um, we got one in Cuyahoga Falls, a comedy stop, and they got a few few other venues around. But uh, we always got comedy in Cleveland, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, so you win the second time you go back. And yeah. You never go back to school. fifty dollars, man. Back up off a of brother. <laughs> Five <laughs> oh. Fifty dollars went a long way back then. It was enough that Five you could. Five oh, baby. <laughs> fifty dollars was enough to make you quit college back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. What would we would you try to win the competition every week? I said, I said, forget that computer science, baby. $50. This, this hot, this cold, hard cash, baby. Come on. I'm through with college. Y'all can't teach me nothing. That's awesome. I just made $50. That's a wrap. <laughs> just sticking your, your handkerchief with coals and I'm out the door. Let's go. That's it. Forget computers. <laughs> wow. So, okay, so you win the competition, and at that point, does it turn into a thing where it's like now you're trying to do open mics and you're doing showcases or you get yeah. invited to do things? And every every Sunday night, uh, 7:30, we went down to the Cleveland Comedy Club, and it's it's crazy because at the time, it, it, I didn't know that comedy uh, Cleveland was the hot hot spot for comedy because oh, wow. when I walked in, when I walked in the club, it was a guy named uh, Frank Santarelli on stage. He went on to play um, Georgie of the uh, Sopranos, right? So, oh, okay. Yeah, Frank Santarelli, great comic. Uh, Terry Mulroy produced uh, Cheers. Dan O'Shannon, uh, Tim Anderson, um, Tom Anderson. Uh, we had um, Arsenio. All these yeah, cats right. uh, 
was down there. AJ Jamal, Steve Harvey, then Drew Carey. That was Damn. that was our, wow. that was our peer group, man. That's wow. right. Like that time, late seventies, early eighties, and yep. that's wow, the heyday of comedy. Yo, yeah, did you, I was, did that you was our the... peer group. So it's like, so you would go down every Sunday, and everybody. It was at the time where everybody was happy, so we would just cheer you on. You know, like, hey, man, uh, we had taglines for you. It wasn't no haters right. there. I, I right. think this was pre-haters. I, I'm pretty sure <laughs> this was pre-haters because we would sit up there and say, hey, man, I like this bit. Why don't you try this? We would write stuff for each other, man, because uh, see, we just wanted to have a good show. It was just, it was it was a, it was a great time, man. So right. that's see, awesome. That's, that's awesome. Like, that's a yeah. beautiful thing, right? Yeah. Helping each other out, right? Encouraging yeah, each other. No competition. There's, there's enough for everyone to eat, right? Everybody, every, mm -hmm. hey, if you win this week, uh, I win next week. It's all good. You had a better set. You know, nobody yeah. was mad at you. You know. Wow. See, that's how they was giving up real cold hard cash back then on the showcases <laughs> on a Sunday $50. night. $50. <laughs> Hey, 50 go a long way back in 76. Bro, it's, yeah, real. It's funny. Uh, that's what they still pay today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You're lucky if you get that. Yeah, yeah. Right. They don't give it to you. They just show it to you. They go, here you go. That's what it was going to be. Inspiration. With taxes. Yeah, exactly. So, oh, wow, man. That is a, that's so much talent. That is so much talent. All, you so guys I, talent. all right. So then I question is, so then you're performing in Cleveland. And then eventually I read how you get, uh, Carson, but between that period, are you in Cleveland the whole time? Do you move? No. Like, I, what happens? No, what happened was, um, I was like I said, it was, um, I was fortunate all the way through this. Uh, it was like I started, this was 83, I started 84, I, I uh, emceed a couple times at the comedy club. 84 was when all of the comedy clubs start opening up. So I'm doing the show in Cleveland, emceeing, and the guy named Jeff Schneider. Uh, who owned the uh, fun, uh, the second uh, Funny Bone in Pittsburgh. Jeff Snyder saw me. He said he liked me and he wanted me to go and uh, I could feature. So my first road gig, I was I didn't MC him. I went wow. straight for feature. I was, oh. My nickname was Tight 20 because I did a <laughs> Tight 20. They wasn't paying me nothing extra for me going over my time. So you better believe at 1958, Hey, have a happy, happy motoring, everybody. You wrap it up. <laughs> that is awesome. They call me a tight 20. Tight so 20. You're... That was my nickname. Tight 20. That's what I'm going to do. Dude, have you ever have you ever told this story before? Do people know this? Because I'm like, that might be. No. I, oh, I, man, I'm just I talking, like... man. That's all. You just know. Like that's... that's all. It's your... usually, usually people don't ask all this. You just know. See, that's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like that should be on a t-shirt. I feel like I could sell that. That could be. I can give you a tight 20 and that could be tight whatever 20. you want it to be. Yeah. <laughs> give you and it was, I'm telling you, it was crazy because at that time it was, uh, it was uh, all these guys from Cleveland. It was uh, Jeff Snyder, Keith Snyder, his brother and uh, Gerald Kubach. They, uh, Gerald Kubach opened up the first funny bone in St. Louis. So I had a pipeline. Oh, so I went from Pittsburgh to St. Louis. Then they opened up one in Milwaukee, Knoxville, everywhere they opened up the funny bone. I was yeah. there. Jesus so that was how my, that was how my career started. Uh, I moved out to LA in '85 because uh, Cleveland wasn't big enough for me, and right. um, so, <laughs> so I, I had to get out, man. And uh, went went there in '85. Uh, got a couple temp jobs and did a couple one nighters and uh, got in with this guy named Danny Mora at the. Um, he was out in Long Beach. He had a couple of rooms that he was booking. So I just started um, getting in, went down to the improv, the comedy store. I never really got in with the um, with the big boys down there. You know, it was like I did a couple of little open mics. That was about it. And then um, 91, um, I got a I got a break. I went down. I had a gig in Atlanta at the Comedy Act Theater and um, I was at, at the airport. And I was with a friend, man, Rory Flynn. Rory, funny comic out of LA, man, Rory Flynn. And um, I was with him, we were about to get our bags. And he said, hey man, that's Bud Freeman over there from the improv. And I'm like, yeah, it is. I had just auditioned for Bud a couple months earlier and it sucked, it sucked bad. And I was like, and I said, man, I gotta go and redeem myself. He said, he's right there, man, go ask him. I said, Bud, uh, just wanted to say, hey, nice to meet you. I did a, I did a showcase for you, man, it was horrible. And I'd like, if, if you could, man, I'd like for you to give me another chance to show you what I can do. He said he was in town for a, a comedy competition, the Johnny Walker comedy competition. 
that night. And he said, if you want, you come on down. I'll take a look at you tonight. So wow. I went down, uh, I went down and uh, showcased. I went down that afternoon. No, I think it was that afternoon. I showcased. He said, okay, come back. I went back that night, won the, co the Atlanta competition. And um, from there, I went on to do the finals in uh, LA. And I won that. When I wow. won that, Jim McCauley, the talent coordinator for the Tonight Show, came up to me and he said, look, some of that material you can do, some of it you can't do. Come to my office tomorrow. You got the Tonight Show. Damn. It was the craziest night of my life. Wow. Plus, oh, by the way, plus I won $25,000. Woo! That's a lot back in the 80s, too. Man. Wow. Now, this was 90, 91. It was 25 grand. This was for the whole thing. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so <clears throat> I want to see if I can connect the dots here. We, we, had, um, we had Wendy Liebman on. Right Wendy, at, yep. Yeah. So she Wendy was there. Was, she she mentioned that competition. She was like, I "Oh, was that's right, that's right." This yeah, is the she competition. Goes, she goes, "I did well, but John this Henson is how she, won that." She night. got the Tonight and Show too. She, she yeah. got the Tonight Show before I did. They loved Wendy. Everybody, everybody loves Wendy, wow. but she actually got the Tonight Show before I did. Wow! But I think wow. it was it was two or three of us from that show that um uh, Jim McCauley was right there, and he was just looking for folks. Man, it was just wow, was just uh, crazy. Uh, I feel like I feel like this is like the golden era. I feel like you're like a baby boomer of comedy, where it's like the perfect time and the perfect place, and everything is booming and happening. Absolutely, I I, wow. I can't I I can't emphasize that enough. It was just like I said, meeting Jeff Snyder, the guys that just opened up the first Funny Bones. Right. So now I got my road work together. So now I can go to LA and I know I still got some road work to do. So right. I can go on and, and, you know, pay my dues and just get a couple of temp jobs and stuff like that. And then um, went out, um, did that, uh, that night, uh, Jim McCauley was there, got the Tonight Show. Um, I got on the Tonight Show, uh, Mr. Carson, he called me over to the couch. Now see, this wasn't supposed to happen. This, this is where everything just went kind of crazy okay <laughs> okay all right here's the deal i was people always ask were you uh were you nervous about doing the tonight show i'm like no i was just anxious i wanted to get it i knew i could do it but right. i'm like come on let's mm. go let's right, go right, right and um so right before uh right before i'm about to go on stage i was me and my boy danny moore was there right and right before i'm gonna go on stage you know behind the curtain and the dude come by, his brother come by and he said, hey, brother, don't be nervous. We're going to make you look real good out there. And I looked and I said, that's Gene Gene, the dancing machine from the gong show. <laughs> and so when they said John Hinton, I walk out, I'm looking, I'm, I'm pointing. I'm like, that's Gene Gene. You can see me. I'm actually pointing because right. I, I was more excited about that. I'm like, okay, let's go do the show. I said, that's Gene Gene. He was the dude with the hook, right? He would come out. No, dance. he was the one that would come out and dance. He was uh, yeah. he was the stage. Uh, he was the prop guy, and the, uh, he ran the oh, lights. Right. And he would okay. come out. Da, da, da. He would do his little dance. Oh yeah. man, he was legendary. So <laughs> I was I was I was more caught up with that. I'm like, oh, let me go on to do this show. And then I do I do the show. And um, so you know when you do it, you look over to Mr. Carson. He give you the thumbs up or the OK sign. And I looked over and he was he was doing this. And that's when everything went into slow motion. I went into shock and wow. I looked and I looked over at Doc, you know, the, uh, the, the sound, the musician got um, the, the band leader because I thought he was talking to him because right. nobody on their first time goes to sit on the couch. I know yeah. that. Right? right. And he's doing this. And I look, oh, oh, I guess it's me. And I walk by, you see straight up shock on my face because I don't wow. I said some stuff. Uh, I don't remember what I said. I was just it was just totally surreal. That's when you that's when it became real to you. That's when you blacked out. I blacked out. Yeah. He asked uh, Mr. Carson asked me if I had an agent and I said, oh, no, man. I'm seeking representation as we speak. And everybody started cracking up and he started laughing. He said, well, I guarantee you, you'll have some soon. He called me, Mr. Carson called me back in his office the next day. He had two typewritten pages of agents and managers that wanted to meet with me because he said I was funny. So Mr. Holy Carson shit. put me on the map, though. Dude. Dude. Holy shit. Dude, this yeah. is this is amazing. This is yeah. crazy. This is crazy. This is awesome. Like you don't hear that. You just don't no. hear. 
John, but that's, that's the kind of power that he had back yeah, then. See, yeah. Like now, there's so many different people. But back then, if you if you got on the Tonight Show, if you got on Letterman, like when Letterman was first balling, like in the early, man, that, that put you on the map. Once you had those credits, right. it, was, it was wide open, dude. Yeah, once Johnny endorsed you, it was, you were a made guy. Oh, that was it, man. So I got an agent. I got the best manager in the world. I got Delores Robinson, Holly Robinson's mama. <laughs> um, she was she was like the the biggest oh she was she just swooped in so I signed with her signed with um oh gosh who was it the uh, uh William Morris I got the big okay. agencies and uh then I switched over to a uh, Gersh and so I always had good representation so I did yeah. a couple pilots in 92 I did my Showtime special in 92 and then 93 I got Living Center wow dude wow. this is I feel like this is like a fairy tale <laughs> it, it, it really it really uh it really was man it was like mr carson put me on the map and then um that was it we was off and running man yeah wow and that that leads to a living single yeah. with a young queen latifah a yeah. kim fields from yeah. acts of life right and tootie, then a great cat mm -hmm. yeah tootie uh kim cole right who kim had been cole. around i love kim cole erica alexander she was cousin pam on the cosby show yes on tc Carson had just did a movie called Living Large that I had saw like a year before, man. Yeah. So I, I knew everybody and nobody knew who the hell I was. <laughs> <laughs> did you have to audition a lot of times yes. for that? Oh, really? Uh, six, seven times, man. Really? It was, wow. It was crazy. Dude, when th this was the this was a big show and everybody wanted this show. So right. when I went, there was it was just they were just casting for Overton, right? My my character. And the line of people was out the door. It wasn't. It wasn't like just ten or fifteen people. It right. was a line of people on the Warner Brothers lot outside the door, and everybody was reading for Overton. And I went in, and um, the uh, Yvette Lee uh, Bowser, uh, she wrote the show, and uh, she was in the um, she was in the audition, and I found out that she wrote the show. And um, so when I started doing my lines, if she would laugh. Then I'm like, oh, well, this is the one that you want to make laugh. So I'm having, I'm just more and more. I'm making, I'm, I'm doing my audition for her because I know if she liked me, I got this right. Right. So I kept going. I did it, and every time I would go back, it'd be less and less people. And I went down. It was, uh, it was just me and one other guy. And uh, I went up to him. I wasn't trying to mess with him. Don't, don't, don't think I did something, you know, uh, un uncalled for. <laughs> but I went up to him. And I said, brother, look here, this show right here, this one ain't for you. Because number one, I'm going to be on this show because I get a chance to be Kim Cole's boyfriend. So that's number one. And number <laughs> two, I'm broke as hell. I wish, you, I wish you the best on the rest of your endeavors. But this one here, I got this. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. I said, you can do your best. You can do whatever. I hope you do your best. But you yes. won't get this one here. So, <laughs> dude, I love the confidence. I love it. And you weren't, yeah, you weren't trying to psych him out. You just like, yeah, hey, I wasn't. I, I wasn't. And and I was I was so happy. He got another show um, later on in his career, and it was a good show. So I was happy for. Him. I don't like mentioning no name, but he got a, he got another show, and everything was cool. Okay. But uh, okay, I was going to try to psych him up. I'm just telling him. I was just telling him. Hey, this one here. This one ain't for you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it was meant to be, right? It was meant for you. And yes, you sir. knew that you felt it. So um that's awesome. And, and then okay, so now you're on Living Single and yeah. the show is hugely popular. Does it come out the gate popular? Oh yeah, we came out. We we came out smoking, dude. The first, like the um, we did the pilot, and the pilot was cool, you know, as, as far as pilots go, but everybody, everybody loved what we did. But um when we got picked up and um the first time the show aired, like the audience that would come in from that first show that aired, then it was, it was, you, you knew that we had a hit because they were clapping and um, the audience really let us know that we had some. So the show was always yeah. filmed in front of a live studio. Audience. Always. Yeah. Always. Wow. I was watching yeah. one the other day from the first season. It was when I think when you first kissed her, you get want to go on the date with her with kickballs yeah. and like, but the audience, like certain jokes, you could tell like certain people just really got into it. It was yeah. nothing canned. You could Dude. tell the crowd was really into this. Hold up. Sal, you got, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, John. What are you going to say? Oh, no, no, Sal, w w go ahead. Oh, well, I was just going to say, because at that time, watching that show, I, I, I remember that relationship between you 
and Kim Cole, right? Yeah. Like it was, there was, you know, there was flirtation, there was interest. Like there was a lot of energy. There was a lot of synergy between the two of you, right? And yeah. so when it built up to that, when it finally, when that point finally came, I remember watching the show and being like, yeah, like they finally <laughs> have like, girl, like they gonna get together. Yeah. Dude, like, it, was, it, was, it was amazing, man, to know that we had, all the crowd was with us. They dug our characters, the chemistry, everything. It was it was just amazing couple months, man. Cause like I said, we came out the gate. We we were hotter than fish grease, man. We <laughs> that, man. It was it was on people, people like plus, and we had Martin was our lead in. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. oh right. right. We had that we That's had right. that, that uh Sunday night lineup. We had Living Color. It was Martin. It, it was like bang, man. We, Fox was oh. We, oh. we was on point, dude. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, that was a great time. I remember that time vehemently. I yeah, I, I love the color. I would be remiss yeah. to say I was not a huge Martin fan at the time. So really? I would tune in to watch you guys show and in living and uh, in living color. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so just I just had to throw that out there because I know gotta, <laughs> gotta Marty Mar, man. Marty Mar just gonna do his thing. He man. gonna do his thing. <laughs> it, it was you just, know, it was it was a whole thing. We'll have to get into it. I've yeah, discussed okay, it. Okay, that man. ain't none of my business. And uh, we'll just keep it moving, man. <laughs> see, see, John, you're I'm, asking too many questions now. You get all. I'm, but I'm exhibiting professionalism. You see what's happening? <laughs> see, I let it go. I let it go. You don't yeah, want to talk about that. I let it go. I ain't trying to get all in your business. See, I appreciate see, that's the that. difference twitch you and me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on my professionalism right now. <laughs> so, okay. So the, the show is hugely popular. Um, you guys have a great run. I mean, you have a great cast of characters. Well, like, hold on. Like, when you go outside the house now, you get recognized. Like, what's this fame hitting you? What's yeah. that about? Yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's the part that really messed me up, man. Because I really? was good. I was good with just um, doing comedy or somebody coming up to you after the show and they say, hey, mm. yeah, you, you funny, really enjoy that. But it's it's something different when um, when you're on TV and all of a sudden girls think you're cute. Now now you're cute, Jack, because, you know, I, I was all right before. I did all right. But, man, I was, oh, I was gorgeous in 93. <laughs> I, I was a gorgeous. In 93, <laughs> oh, I got gorgeous. Hear me? Yeah, Dude. so that that was weird, and it was a whole <laughs> dynamic, and you know, just so, so it was um, it it was a good time. I should have really been enjoying it, but it was um, it was a little overwhelming. So it was a lot of a lot of drugs and a lot of um, start getting high, man, and that that kind of because I was so happy with I had been doing comedy for so long that uh, I was doing like forty weeks a year, so. It was, wow. it was, yeah, I was, I was mad. I'm telling you, I had all of the, uh, all of the improvs, all the funny bones and you could do them two or three times, especially if you got a tight 20 like right. me. <laughs> so, so I'm doing each, each funny bone three, four times a year. Nobody's coming to see the uh, feature act. So I was working busy. So when I finally got living single, it was a chance to where I could just stay home on the weekends and do right. nothing. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. instead of me going, I left a lot of money on the table because instead of me going out on the road, like Kim Coles and I going out on the road and doing a big comedy together, tour, yeah, 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 I'm sitting at the house watching watching college football and uh, doing uh, doing drugs and stuff. Unfortunately, but um, that uh, that kind of overwhelmed a lot of stuff. Um, it, it was um, it was just the the fact that uh, I was on this show and I wasn't really ready for it and. Uh, it, it, it got kind of murky, but uh, we got through it. I, I did my thing, man. Uh, I was always, always got through, always made sure I got it, but it was, uh, it was really wild times, man. It was a lot of stuff behind the scenes, but we got through and um, it was, I would, I would know uh, Steve Harvey, man. That was like my big brother, right? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> Steve Harvey would, um, people, people would call and they would, they would say, um, People at the show, like if I messed up, if I was if I was doing if I was doing something crazy on the show, they would always call Steve because they know I would listen to Steve. So anytime I, they say, "Oh, Steve Harvey on the set," I said, "Oh man, what the hell did I do now?" Because <laughs> <laughs> I know why he's there, man. But yeah, Big Bro would always come talk to me. I, I love him. He's the, he's uh, one of the people that helped get me together. It didn't oh. it didn't happen right then, but eventually, the things that he had said to me. Um, really took uh, took hold later on, and that's how I got got finished with all of that. Wow, wow. man! Props to Steve nice. Harvey. Yeah, right. Yeah, Cleveland, like, Cleveland's own. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's a brotherhood, camaraderie, yep. right? Community. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay, so have a rough time, make it through that. The show you get five years out of the show, four and a half seasons. Yeah. Um, and then once that ends, 
then you're you're on the Hughleys. Like right that same year, right? Like yeah. the one got canceled and you're on yeah. the next one. How, we what got the? canceled. It was so crazy. We got canceled like uh, in December or January. We got canceled in the middle of the season. Wouldn't let us finish the year, but they would put our reruns on and we still finished number one with the black audience with our reruns for the rest of the season. Wow. So I had some time off and um, I had a developmental deal from Warner Brothers. And, you know, for a developmental deal, you can't do anything but read for their shows or whatever. They didn't have anything for me. I wanted to do DL's show because I'd known DL for years, man. And I couldn't do it because it was on a different uh, different uh, network and different production company. So um, they, uh, I got a chance to read for this show because some another, another good fortune for a brother, man. Um, the guy that was booked on the show my part, the character that played Millsap, it didn't work out mm. and they needed somebody else. So the people uh, on the show, uh, Greenblatt, John Lowry, the producers, they got me out of my other contract so I could come and read for this. Wow! I went to read for, they were already pre-shooting. So the show, it was a go. Right. This was the last mm. minute. I came in, I read for it. I think the next day or two days later, we, we shot the pilot. I learned wow. all my lines, and it was on and popping, man. Okay, hold wow. up. I, I, okay, before we go into this, I gotta rewind. I gotta rewind. I gotta go back. I gotta go back. So, you, you're doing stand up. You're on the road. You know these people. The funny bones. The improvs. You're the the, the the beginning of that. You move to L.A. Do you take acting classes at some point? I did, but it was. Um... I was always on the road. So the acting class, uh, it was this big, big uh, acting coach named Roy London. Big, big, big time, man. He, he was well known. And he had, um, and this girl that was underneath him uh, that was uh, doing most of his class was Ivana Chubbick. I love her. That's my girl. She got me together because she would say, well, look, you out of town all the time. We do this every Wednesday, every Wednesday. I was on the road somewhere. Right. And she said, look, the best thing you could do is if you get a script, come to me let's go over it uh, and then because it ain't no sense of me teaching you Shakespeare and you about to read for living single let's right. go <laughs> and get this done so right. between Ivana Chubbick and my uh, my boy who I mentioned earlier Danny Mora those were my acting coaches so we went over the script and went back and forth and that that's how we did it because I couldn't take any acting class I every every time I I'd always get a last minute gig or something so I was never in town Wow. See, that's what I was curious about, because it's not easy to just get a script and go in and read. I mean, there's a whole analysis and fig, like, you know, understanding the character, where he comes from, what he's yeah. doing, what's the dynamic between the other characters, right? Yeah. Like, and then trying to figure out the voice and how you want to present that character. So, so there's a lot of natural talent here and, and some help from some people. And, and some very good, uh, I had some very good coaches, man. Like I said, Danny, I, I would, I would do the same. I would do the script over and over and over again. And he'd say, I'll buy that one. So once I got him to say, I'll buy it, then right. I'm good. Same thing with Ivana. Uh, we, we just kept going over it, you know, and she was, um, she was so busy. It, it would just be people over her house and she was so accommodating. Like if, if you had a part, um, she would have her time, uh, like you had to get there at 630 in the morning or seven right. in the morning because her time was so precious. You get that half hour with Ivana and that was it, man. So you could do it and you go ahead and do your, um, going to do your audition man so between wow. Ivana and Danny Mora and then um once I got mm. the show then I had a uh, Chip Fields Kim Fields mom she was our acting coach so between those three man I was set <laughs> wow that is amazing okay okay so so you read for you read for the Hughleys and you get it you start yeah. shooting and yeah. and that show runs for what I think three seasons three or four we seasons did, we did five years on that one too oh it's five on that one as well yeah yeah we did now this four yeah we did four. Oh, four. okay because it changed it switched networks at one point i think it was yeah right yeah we went we was uh we were on abc and then they we switched to uh upn the underpaid negro network and then <laughs> hold on time out i gotta <laughs> laugh at that <laughs> the underpaid negro network Brilliant. Wow. That's what Brilliant. Erica called. Erica always called it that. The paid <laughs> Negro Network. That is awesome. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. All right. Um. So when the Hughleys, 
I mean, now the, you wanted this show. So was it just way more fun? Like where you're like, this is who I wanted to be at with, working with? Yeah, it, it was it was cool. Um, but once again, like I said, it was um, in the middle of, um, I, I still wasn't happy and I was still getting high. So it was a lot of turmoil there. But it was fun to not have the pressure. I never wanted a show, the John Hinton show. I never wanted that. I just wanted to come in, say my two little lines, and my little catchphrase and just happy trails. I'm gone. That's all I want. Dino might. That's, that's, that's it. Give me, that's, give me that wacky catchphrase. Hey, I got a tight 20 for you. <laughs> that's you know, all I want, man. That's so. very interesting to say, to hear you that's say, because funny. that was during a time period where comedians were getting shows, right? Like oh, it yeah. was <clears throat> like, um, and so that was never anything that you really wanted to do, huh? He was like you, like you said, you wanted to do your little part, get in, get out, and move on. Because I had so much fun on living living single with all of those all those people in there. That cast. The thing that I loved about that show is that every time that door opened up in that apartment, somebody's favorite character was walking in, and it didn't right. matter, you know. Right. So it's like and I didn't true. mind if people like Erica. Yeah, I I do too. I I, I love Max. I love Ray Shane. Yeah, I was gonna say everybody Max. Everybody had everybody did their thing, man. So it was you know all I had to do was my part. No heavy lifting, man. It was a uh, once in a while you get a show where you were in the a storyline a lot you know like I, it was a couple of shows but um where it's a lot of lines and stuff and it's like mm, that's cool but i just like coming in there doing doing the little catchphrases and just sashaying on out of there <laughs> get paid come here and do a couple of lines get, and and look i've been on sound i've you know fortunately been on set uh and i've been on you know under five or whatever the case 10 right and uh i'm just gonna say this man them days when you kind of they get extended, and yeah, you get a little bit of overtime, yeah. There's no way, there's no way I would never not act, right? Yeah. You, if I got two lines, I'm saying the two lines, and <laughs> if my call time's at eight a.m. and then I don't, I don't have to be ready until four, I will be there all day, all we'll day. Yes, yep. go, let's get. That's beautiful. <laughs> um, okay, so then the Hughes runs its, its time, right? It, it, it and uh, so then after that, now you're back to comedy, or do you stay in L.A. or what do you? I was, I was still in LA, um, but I, I had taken so much time off of comedy. It was people just associated me with acting more so than comedy because uh. I, was, I was laying around and, and not being out there like I should have. As I said, I left so much money on the table, man. And so uh, 2002, that was like a real rough year. I had a couple gigs here and there. But nobody really wanted to book me because nobody knew me as stand up. They knew me from TV, but right. not stand up. So that was like really rough time. And that's when um, that that's when I started getting high for real. Then um, that was rough. And then um, 2003, I got through that year. It was rough. Got through that year. And then um, 2003, I was um, I, I did a gig in um, Orlando. And um, I did a gig and I met this girl, this bad, bad little girl. Who you bad? <laughs> we started chitting and chatting. Anyway, we got into a relationship. Uh, one thing led to another. And um, the next year uh, I had a, I had my, um, my little baby, uh, Nicole Simone. So once I got my baby, uh, that's when everything cleared up, you know, because wow. I had um, I had her. It, like I said, I, I, it wasn't immediately. It wasn't like I looked at it and said, oh, you're the most beautiful baby in the world. I'm going to quit everything. Like, in a minute, though, I'm going I'm I'm to be there for you in a minute. Like, <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't happen right away, you know. Yeah. But I knew that I had to change my life then because it was um, when you got somebody that's looking up to you. And because, um, like, when, you, when, you, um, when you're doing drugs, it's the most selfish thing in the world. It's all about you. I'm doing comedy. I'm doing TV, make-believe stuff. When you got somebody real that's looking up to you, and I said, baby, I'm never going to let you down. And that's that's how I, I uh, got my thing together. And, you know, still here, still funny, and um, still doing these jokes, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, buddy. Yes, sir. It's beautiful. Yeah, buddy. So let me ask you this. Um, I was going to ask what was your drug of choice, but that's not necessary. So did you go? Oh, it was, it was, um, I, I was, uh, I was on, um, the cocaine. Um, it was, uh, -huh. uh the, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't call it crack because that that's for the ghetto people. I, I just <laughs> call it rocks. You know, it was, uh, <laughs> it, was it was rocks. So it, it was like, uh, rocks is as much fun to make as it is to smoke. And, okay. and the thing is I would get, um, I, cause 
a couple of times I got beat, you know, I, I'd be driving around and somebody, they give you some garbage or something like that. And I said, no, you know what? I'm just going to get some powder, a test tube and some bacon. Anyway, I ain't trying to give out the ingredients on this. <laughs> <laughs> the recipe. <laughs> You know, somebody's sitting there right now like, this is what you want to do. And your technique, you got to work on your technique. Oh, my God. You got to put it on the stove. You got to get a Pyrex. You got to. <clears throat> hey, I know. You. Hey, look. <laughs> look, I was in the lab. You know how right. people say, um, people say I experimented with drugs. Well, yeah. I was Dr. Funkenstein. I was in the lab all the time. <laughs> I was, my, my hip bone connected to my thigh bone. My <laughs> thigh bone connected to my labor. I am Dr. Funkenstein. There you <laughs> go. Okay, so, all right, now, not to get too, and you can answer this, how you <laughs> can, right? Because, um, you know, so you moved to LA, there's yeah. some stardom, right? You get some access, there's some money. Um, the drugs are obviously a, a part of your life. Now, what what was behind that? Was there was there some uncertainty? Was there fear? Like, were you trying to overcome? You know what I mean? Like, there's the idea of like people trying to escape something with the use. It's or is it just a having a good time and got got introduced to it and, it and just it became a thing? It's it's a thing where I I, I ask myself that to this day because. You know, like uh, like you said, most of the time when people do drugs, they're trying to escape a reality. You know, it's right. like, oh man, look, man, I'm I'm on a hit TV show. Right, right. right. The finest women in Hollywood. I go from that TV show to this TV show. I did the Tonight Show. I'm living. You, I just told you what my life was. It was right, true. Right, it, right. It's just uh, it's something wrong. You know, like everybody, everybody's not um, not the same. I just wasn't. Um, I didn't have everything together and. That was just a, a crutch that I held on to for no reason at all. Cause it, it was like, I was living the best reality. It was no reason. I should have been sober as a judge and just enjoy all right. that I, that it could. And it could have been so much more if I hadn't have been. I, I mean, I, I could have did movies. I could have did some stuff. I actually, I had a, a, a pretty good um, a grasp of, you know, doing the acting once I got into it, I could have right. did more, but it was just, I had messed up. And then uh, I had the real bad car accident. That kind of took me out of my game too. That was another thing that that really um, should have stopped me, but it didn't because when I survived it, um, I was just like, "Why am I still here?" So it was just a continuation of the madness. Okay, I read so, like you needed surgical, uh, you needed face surgery, and then yeah. you were yeah, right. and within yeah. six weeks, so you were back on set. Yeah, I was gonna. Weeks. Yeah, they. Um, I, I felt so bad because I was drunk. Um, I, I was I was drunk. We had, we did the um, we had a party. We, matter of fact, it was it was the it was the day that we had switched uh, from ABC to UPN, mm -hmm. and then uh, the new network had threw a big party for us. It was free liquor, and um, well, uh, this this ain't gonna end well. And I got drunk, um, and uh, I get back to uh, get back to my room. I was gonna sleep in because uh, we had, we were taping that night. And uh, I was gonna sleep in my uh, dressing room and just get up in the morning and go. And um, my friend called up and said um, that our, 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 our dealer had, had some more cocaine and it just so happens I was out of cocaine. So I was drunk as hell, but um, I'd, uh, my habit, it wasn't me, my habit decided to get in the car and drive. So I had a car, Acura NSX speedy car, mm. uh, bad car. Yeah. I, I said had, cause I don't have it no more. Cause uh, I hit a wall at 145 miles an hour, and um, it took them four hours to cut me out of the car. Uh, my feet went through the floorboard. My head hit the steering wheel. Cause when you're doing 145, the airbag don't have a chance to deploy. So my head hit, then I bounced back. Then here come the airbag. I don't need it now. I'm knocked the hell out. And um, <laughs> so I ripped my stomach open because I had my seat down on. I'm drunk as hell, but safety first. Right. <laughs> It took them four hours to cut me out of that car, man. And I know that because I had to do a community service afterwards. Mm -hmm. And um, when you're doing, uh, uh, it just so happens that uh, my supervisor for community service, he was there that night on the, uh, on the 101 where I hit. And he said, man, you cost me $100. And I said, how I cost you $100? He said, because I bet my boy ain't no way in hell nobody going to come out of that car alive. And I said, wow. well, I'm sorry you lost that bet, bro, but I'm glad I'm here. So yeah, 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 yeah. I'm glad you're here too. Wow. So that happened, wow. 
So that's uh, like I said, I'm I'm just a I'm a cautionary tale. I I, I led a, a fairy tale life, but I'm a cautionary tale about what not to do when you get all these blessings, man. I I did it the wrong way, and I'm just trying to um just get it together, take care of my kid, and um and stay funny, man. That's yeah, absolutely. You're here for a reason, man. So we're I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you made it through that. Yes, Thanks, man. Are you? Yes, when did you move back to Cleveland, man? Six years ago. My dad passed um, six years ago. And before he uh, he passed, I, I got a couple months to just be here with him and uh, stay with him. So I'm so glad I did. And then after that, after he passed, that messed me up so bad. I said, you know, I need to be here. Plus, it wasn't a lot of stuff happening in L.A. at the time anyway. So I just mm -hmm. came on back home. I said, hey, all I'm doing now is just um, stand up. So all I need is the airport. So I'm good. I just stayed here. It's true. Nice. True. Yeah. Nice. OK, so uh, I want to ask you this. We'll go back real quick. But. Did you go, did you go to rehab or were you able to stop? No, I, I just, I just stopped. It was, um, it was wow. just a thing the way it was so weird, you know, because it was something that, you know, we had talked about rehab, but I'm like, that's so Hollywood stuff. It's like, man, if, if you want, if you want to, if you want to do it, just do it. So it was just, um, uh, like I said, I was thinking about my daughter and my situation and everything. And I just said, you know, I got to put this stuff down and, and I did. So wow. that was wow. it. it no, no mystery to it. It was one day. And it wasn't like I quit on purpose. It was like I called my dude and I said, hey, man, you got some. And he didn't have none. And um, I never called him back. I just yeah. never did. I never checked. You know, usually I'd be checking with him the next day or the week right. after. I never got, I called him that one time. He said he didn't have it. And that was the day. I were, were there friends you would hang out less with then or no, it was just. No, because all the, all the people that I was around, it was, it was, it was around me. So some mm. of them, uh, somebody was doing what they do, but like, um, the thing is, it's like, uh, everybody respected what I was trying to do. So it's like, Hey man, we ain't doing nothing wrong, but you know, we going to do our thing. And I'm like, all right, cool. So I can hang. I'm not just going to just separate from people that I've right. grown up with, you know, right. it wasn't, it wasn't right. that type. Well, I've got a new life now. It's like, well, you know, <laughs> it's like the whole thing is it's like, as long as you respect what I'm, what I'm doing, what I'm not doing anymore. And we're right. Right. So I, don't, I didn't have a problem with that. Wow. John, this is amazing. I mean, you literally, I mean, most people have a hard time getting that monkey off their back. It, it sounds like you literally just took it off and set it down and walked away, and that was it. it like I said, it was it, it was inadvertent, but it was just one day. It was I, I called, dude didn't have it, and I never called back. And I was like, all right, well, let's just keep on moving. You that don't have it. cravings anymore? No, no, I'm this good. For you. I mean, so that it makes was, it. It's I, sometimes I I almost break down crying because I spent so much of my life doing that. And the damage that it caused, the, the accident, uh, hurting my people and um, being irresponsible. And it, it's just like, man, I, I just feel stupid that, mm. I, like I said, I had this blessed life, this great family. Uh, I got no problems. I, you know, I, I got a great reality. But what am I doing? I just felt so stupid. And that was another reason why I got back to the Hughleys as quick as I did, because I felt so bad, you know, you can't leave people hanging. It's, it's people's right. jobs like that. Right. I'm out here driving around trying to get out. I felt so bad, man. Um, within um, within six weeks, man, I, I was back on it. I had walking cast on, I had glasses because my eye had popped out of my head. They had to put that back in. So it's, it's that's why it goes off to the left. Now I got a progressive eye. My my this eye, for some reason, is something to the left, man. I'm a, I'm a liberal, I can't help it. but. <laughs> You're physically a liberal. Uh, you, got, <laughs> you got a birdie eye. <laughs> like he's like, I gotta be liberal. <laughs> I got no choice. Got no to the choice. left, my brother. To the left. To so, the left. Uh, but yeah, that's that's why I had to get back uh, as quick as I could because DL man, you know, and they was all there for me. Everybody was there for me. Everybody was praying for me. So I got back and um, I got back on the show. I was limping around. I had two walking casts on, but I was I was doing all of my stuff. They had wow. to, they did me. Uh, they they filmed me from the waist up, and um, I was doing my thing, man. I had to, man, because I just Amazing. felt so wow. stupid. Man. Good for you though. Well, you know, yeah. it's I you know I have this idea sometimes of like. You know, in the moment, you're doing, the, you're making the best decision you can with the information you have, right? And and also, you know, obviously, hindsight is always 2020. You can look back and see those things. But everything that you went through is for a reason. Like you're here now for a reason. Like all those, as you say, a cautionary tale or just proof to show that you can overcome. You can persevere. Yeah. You can push through. I mean, the person, the the discipline that you showed, 
that right there enough is a, is enough to inspire anybody. Like if you want to make change, sometimes it literally is just don't call back. Yeah, just that's it. Just just don't that's make it. that next call, man. Just and don't make the next call. It was just oh, the weirdest wow. thing. Yeah. Okay. So all right. So we're getting to the end, but um, so you're on the road now. You're doing stand up. You get to make your own schedule. Um, and where where are you at for the most part? Where can people find you? Um. I'm doing a lot of stuff up in New York, a lot of one nighters now. Still not a, not a lot of uh, not a lot of stuff for my agents, but I'm, I'm doing a few clubs like I'm, I'm down in Atlanta uh, at the end of next month. Um, I got to go to Alabama, um, little small town, Alabama, um, uh, Saturday. I'm doing Alabama State University, Atlanta, just uh, down south and a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of one nighters and stuff up in uh, New York, New Jersey. Okay. Uh, Connecticut, you know, just bounce around, just hustling. It's this guy named Talent out of uh, New York and Ray Dijon out of Brooklyn. And those guys have been keeping me going for the past few years. So shout wow. out to them, man. But, uh, That's awesome. you know, like I said, it, it's a lot of things where, you know, I was, everybody gets so caught up in getting that agent and manager and all that. That's cool. Sometimes you just got to know the right people. Absolutely. And the right, right. people are yeah. doing their own thing. They, they producing their own shows. And, doing, and if you know the right people, I'm, I'm busier with them than I am with my agent, but it's like, Hey, I'm just trying to get paid, man. Right, right. So you mentioned Alabama. Um, I'm going to, I'm leaving for Birmingham. What's today? Friday. I leave for Birmingham on Sunday. Yeah. So will you be down there next week? Uh, no, let's see next week. I got to do, I'm doing, um, on the six. Is it? Yeah. Uh, the six I'm doing, uh, Montgomery, uh, Alabama state, I think. Uh, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm doing, okay. uh, Alabama. I'm doing, um, Aniston, Alabama, uh, Aniston, Saturday. Yeah. yeah. I'm doing Alabama state and, uh, and my daughter's in Huntsville. She's going to college there, man. So it's like Alabama. That's, that's my state now. Well, how did Alabama, uh, you got a connection in Alabama. Cause that's where I grew up. You know, I grew up in Birmingham. Yeah. 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 So you got an Alabama connect. Yeah, well, I mean, my daughter's down there now, so I'm definitely connected. And that was like one of the first road gigs that we did in the South. Me and Steve Harvey went down to uh, Birmingham, man, and that was that's. I had to come back on the podcast and tell you that story. Oh ah. man, please, absolutely, I love it. I love it. Well, okay. So with that being said, because I got you know, I grew up in Birmingham. I got tons of pe tons of people down there. So uh, we'll talk later. I get whatever specific dates they are, and then I will try to send as many people your way. As possible, so don't be surprised if like don't be asking me no questions. Make sure you stay professional. Uh, stay in my no. business, right? So hey, uh, so John, you uh, you excited about the new Cavs coming up season? Yeah, I'm looking forward to that, man. Dude, I am excited because we we did all of that. It was like I hated giving away all of the draft picks, but at the same time, we on Sexton didn't play last year, so what we weren't losing him. Right. Marketing, I wasn't worried. Only one I was I was upset about was that um, the 6'8 guy we had just got from Kansas. I wanted to yeah, see, the rook, I think yeah. he's going to be a good ball player. He's 6'8, yeah. we need some size because we got these two 6'1 guards, yeah, which is cool, guards. they can score. Right. But that 6'8 shooter, you, you can always use that. Right, so, right. That but to be, keep uh, Allen and Mobley, I was so stoked. Oh yeah, we, we got, got the got big man, we good, yeah. So yeah. the nucleus was there, and think about it. At the All Star break, they were only two games out of first place in the East. right. And they got injured. Alan yeah, Mobley injured. injured. Yeah. We, yeah. we don't even had a done the play in stupid. That play was without tournament. Sexton. So with right. with uh, Mitch. Oh man, come on! And we uh, Kevin Love still doing his thing. He still can shoot. Go back. It's like barring injuries. Oh, we gonna make a nice yep. little run in the playoffs. Yeah, okay. you hear that, Reg? Right. You hear that? I hear that. Hey, look, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I can't front. I was a Cleveland fan for a long time. That's right. LeBron. I and rightly so. Right? Yeah. And then, and then LeBron <laughs> left and went to Miami. Then I was a Miami fan. Yeah. Back to Cleveland. I was a Cleveland fan. Okay. And then he went to LA and I'm currently an LA fan. But I, <laughs> I still have an affinity for Cleveland. I got two yeah. people in my life that's, you know, so. <laughs> So I well, he's, he's, he's coming back to Cleveland, man. We're going to get him on that last year. He bought 47. Yeah. <laughs> 47. Still top he's 10. still going to be good. He's, he's still, still going to be good for 20. He gonna... He's still throwing up triple doubles. Watch what I tell you. That's right. Him and Bronny. 47. Oh, my God. Think about it. The dude is 37, and he had his best season ever. He averaged 30 at 37. Yeah. That's crazy. Unbelievable. He's doing better ever numbers that. now than he did when he was 17. Yeah, yeah. So that's crazy. at 47, I figured he got to be good for 25 and 12. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. John, uh, real Thank quick, you. one last thing. 
anything you want to say to any comments or anybody out there listening, just words of advice you'd like to pass on. Um, <laughs> Yeah, just well, like I said, just uh, just don't do what I did because that, that, that's it. But um, the bottom line is for for comedy, for acting, for anything that you're doing, uh, just be ready. You never know when something's gonna happen. Like for me, I ran into Bud at the airport. Man. Mm-hmm. That was it. I was ready. Oh, and that night, I went in and showed him what was happening. And once I got that, everything that happened in my life was because. I was prepared. So it's like, don't ever think about any show being so small. Like it might be a small crowd, but you never know who's in the audience. I was doing a show. I was in uh, Vegas working with John Joseph and um, I'm up there and it's like small crowd. And, and I'm like, eh, well, but I'm still doing my thing. Right. And I get off stage and say, Hey, uh, John Joseph came and say, Hey man, Rodney Dangerfield was in the back. He really liked your stuff. Wow. You know, it, awesome. you, you never know, man. Never so know. every never show is important. You never know if Jim McCall, if the Tonight Show coordinator, uh, Rodney Dangerfield, uh, Bud Fripp, whoever, somebody could be there, man. So just make sure you go out. Don't never put it on automatic pilot. Make sure that you're up there to make them laugh. I don't care if it's 10 people or 1,000 people. You're going up there to slay. And no, it's yeah, like I love that. I people, love that. But I'm about to tear them five people up, hear me? <laughs> I love I'm that. Damn, I'm Sal going knows. Table to table on a joke by joke basis. <laughs> <laughs> I love right that philosophy because I've I've said that philosophy to Sal. I go, it ain't they fault if they small. I still deliver regardless, big or small. Um, the other thing I hear in there is um, self confidence and belief yeah. in self. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah, and don't be afraid to to advocate for yourself. No, this right. this this is what you do, man. Yeah, you can, you can't be uh you can't be afraid. But it, it was like if Rory Flynn, I'm, I might not even did that, but Rory Flynn, that's my dude right there. He said, man, go on over there and talk to him, man. If you already got a you got an end with him, so it ain't like you coming out of the blue. So right. he know you maybe. So, uh, but he he coached me into that. But I'm so glad he did. And um. When the when the when it presents itself to you, you just got to take advantage of it. So be ready, be funny, and the rest of it take care of itself. I love it. Awesome. From John Hinton, uh, be Thank ready you so, so you don't much. have to get ready. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Be ready so you don't have to get ready. John, ready. That's right. Man, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time, brothers. It's so great to see you. I know it's Thank been a you, long man. Time. You, you, you way too nosy, though, man. See, I <laughs> way too much stuff. This ain't cool. That, that, I don't appreciate that, man. But um, I'm about to go to bed now because I'm, I'm old and it's about time for my nap. What time? <laughs> I don't stay up all day no more. I'm old now. <laughs> I get up at uh, five in the morning. I take a nap at, uh, you know, that COVID, man. You got your little routine together, right? Yeah. So yeah. It's like, it's all, this is nap time now. So I'm I'm loopy now. That's why uh, I said all that stuff. So don't believe uh, that I said because I'm loopy and I ain't had my nap now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Get That's your it. siesta. That's it. That's it. <laughs> oh, man. What an honor and a pleasure, brother. So good yeah, to thank see you. you so thank much, you so much John. for joining us, man. Oh, man, it's good to see you again, Reggie. Good to meet you, Sal, yeah, man. You too. Uh, anytime, man, we'll, we'll do it again. I, I got some more stories. I, I forgot a lot of stuff, but the drug took away a lot of stuff. But I remember eventually, <laughs> and it might be some more stuff. I got Little Richard stories. I got, oh, oh, I got, oh you got, I got little... Boosie. I got Boosie P Funk stories. I got Ooh. all kind of, y'all, y'all better come on back. Let's, let's zoom let's again. Let's do it. Oh, we'll dude, we yeah. coming back. Occasion. Yes, yes, right, we're going to come back it. and do it for sure. Uh, and also, I want to get into the writing. I want to hear how do you develop your material, where you get it from? Is it just inspiration or is it like life and every day? Just, just, um, just a, a lot of COVID stuff. COVID was the best thing to happen to me as far as that goes, because <laughs> I got a chance to write a few. I, I wrote another 15, 20 minutes that I start my act off with. Oh, and nice. that's, that's the best part about because anything I write new, I do it up front. Because if yeah, it don't yeah. work, I can bail out later. But yeah. right up front, and that gets me off to a great start. So, you know, just my surroundings. All my stuff has always been observational. Nice. Love it. All right. Cool, we'll, save, we'll save some of that stuff for next time. John. Okay. I got some more stuff now. Come on back. All right, we got it. We'll be back. We'll be back <laughs> for sure. ass. You and your little Sal, your little nosy ass people. Y'all go somewhere now. I got to go to, I got to take a nap now. That's enough of y'all. All right. Uh, go take your night, nap. Night, night, John. Thank you. So good seeing you, man. Take care. I'll be, I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to hit you up like this. Just on There you go, happening. man. All right. All right, brother. Have a y'all great take day. Care now. Yes, sir. You Later. too. Later. Awesome. There it is, Raj. Awesome job. Dude, that was, that, was, I, that was awesome. To our audience, I hope that you enjoyed that as much as Sal and I did. Oh, John, great. phenomenal. He ran the gamut. 
He ran got so game. real. Got so got, real. Got real great stories. I mean, and this, I mean, dude, it's like the coincidences, right? The, yeah, it's just, just crazy. He, it was so crazy too. Like back then, like it, it's just crazy. Like we, Wendy Liebman and him. Now we both see them from the same show, and they're just yes. giving out these cars and dates, and then people's lives changing, changing. <laughs> but hold up, though. Now even think about the 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 plethora of talent that was. That he was around in Cleveland. I mean, you that and I was could crazy. Almost... Arsenio, Drew Carey. Oh man, dude, you and I could almost we could almost say that we were we were in something very similar with the people with our peer group, right? Based on today, we had a good peer Arsenio. group in SF, but, I feel, but yeah, oh, we had a great peer group. But I mean, but to think about like all the clubs, right? Like the talent, the clubs, the the ability to like make a living as a comedian, as right? a middle. As a, like middle. as a middle, <laughs> my man said they call they used to call me a tight twenty because <laughs> they don't pay you for going over t- over twenty minutes, which is true, right? Which is true. Um, man, that was great. I really thoroughly enjoyed that. Man, it was yeah, good it was awesome, too. man. That yeah, was uh, that yeah. was cool. It was, uh, yeah, funny, had, man. Dude's he hilarious. Had couple, he had a couple phrases in there. I was like, yo, man. I'm like those. They would be great on it. Like I ain't even gonna say it. I'm just gonna. I might just. I might have to just make something happen and then send them a check. <laughs> hotter out. than grease fire. <laughs> <Yo, laughs> or fish fill. Fish, fish grease. Fish oil, fish hotter, grease. hotter than fish grease. My man said I was gorgeous in 96. Or yeah, 93, <laughs> yeah. 93. Yeah. I was gorgeous in 93. That's yeah. I mean, that's a thing. Like people, you know, people could talk about and You know, he's hard on himself about it, but no one, uh, very few people could understand the situation he was in. Like that's got to be super overwhelming, well, and, and it's easy for you know, so many people to fall. You know, drugs are there and stuff. Yeah. And, well, and that's what I was gonna say. That's what I was kind of was trying to get to a little bit was, you know, he's talking about being on this show, and that le- level of fame was overwhelming to some degree, right? He wasn't right. This is that. a comedian, someone who seeks com- audiences and talk, and he was overwhelmed. And he was overwhelmed. Like all of a sudden, he like he said, you know, it was it was fine to have somebody after the show like. Uh, you know, right. at the show, like, oh yeah, I saw you at the thing, and you're fun. But now you're on television, and it's everywhere. And then the women, the opportunities, like you lose your anonymity, you lose some of your privacy. Like, there's a lot that comes along with that. Everyone's chasing fame, but fame ain't for everybody, right? right. To even be a comedian at a time when they were giving out show. I mean, Ray Romano, George Lopez, uh, 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 Tim Allen, uh, yeah, Gilles, Allen, Steve Harvin, Ellen, like. Would be, I, was it um i mean uh, even dl <laughs> even d yeah dl hewley with the Hughley. <laughs> damon wayans had a, like there are plenty of com- bill cosby right the cosby show it was a time where comedians were getting tv shows based off of their acts and their personalities and here was a guy who was literally like i don't want the show i like the ensemble piece right i like being a part of a, a cast or a group Maybe some of it is like not Man, that's what I was hoping for, Reg, but you never came through. So I guess I can't be the wacky <laughs> it, neighbor. It, it, it ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. Cause uh, I don't think it'll be the Reggie Steele show, but it'll definitely be it'll be Reggie and something. But don't worry, you can Reggie and Mahershala. <laughs> Shit, you think my name's gonna go first <laughs> in that scenario? You that's really are hilarious. my friend. You that's really are my right. friend. That's right. <laughs> Really like, awesome. hold on hold on hold on would we call the show no 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 <laughs> he wouldn't even have to say anything his people would say it before and he would just look at you <laughs> they would look, they'd be like really no it'll be it'll be ali and friend yeah. it won't even be, Reggie. It'll be ali and friend okay just ali you're lucky if you're <laughs> exactly i just happen to be in the show right so uh but yeah man it ain't over yet. We got some we still got some room some wiggle room to make it happen and, uh, but yeah, that was good times, man. Uh, yeah, good job, great. Reg. Thank and you, um, that was great. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, cool. Stoked Wendy, about the cast. Wendy and too. John really were, and then to hear his story, hear her story, and then know that their paths. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was funny because like he was already in LA, and then Carson, and then gave hooked them up with all these agents and stuff. And she yeah. was talking about she had to go back to her day job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy it's so how it crazy, works, man. man. It's crazy how it works. Well, hey. Uh, I guess we should wrap it up, huh? That was good. Yeah, wrap it up, man. Good job. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Hey, guys, thank you for listening. Uh, please keep listening, and we appreciate you being there. Listening, watch, share, comment. See, Apple, Spotify, YouTube. That's where we're at. Yes. 
personally, I always go to YouTube because I like to watch us to see what we look yeah, like. Yeah, you love checking yourself out. No, I'm not checking myself out. <laughs> Everyone does a little bit, though. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see what I look like. I'm like, oh, do I need to lean this way I just or that saw way? it for an hour and a half. It's, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, we sure did. Uh, shout out to John Hinton for coming through and uh, bringing the hilarity and bringing the stories and uh, sharing with us um, so much. Uh, yeah, really awesome grateful guy. For that. Yeah, awesome guy. Great dude. Uh, thanks for tuning in. That's Sal Kalani. I'm Reggie Steele. And this is Spitballer. Peace. <laughs>